Hello everyone, my name is Angelica and welcome to my channel. Textured wall art is having its big time now. You can see it all over Pinterest, Instagram and even interior magazines. It's a kind of an art which doesn't need a lot of artistic skills, but still it can be sometimes really pricey. In today's video, I will show you two different techniques of creating very similar looking wall art. I believe there's plenty more techniques you can use to create the texture canvas, but I'm going with these two. So let's see which one was better, easier and less time consuming. For my first project, I will be using thrifted canvas. It's a great idea to save you some money. The picture on it doesn't really matter as it will be all covered anyway. For this textured canvas, I'm going with quite a big frame. As a first technique of creating the texture, I will be using old fabric. The best one is cotton as it absorbs better. I place it flat on top of my canvas, leaving about 15 cm extra on each side. I'm mixing all-purpose filler with PVA glue and some water. At first, I want the consistency to be quite runny. And using white brush, I apply this mixture all over my canvas. This will help the fabric stick to the canvas. Then I put my fabric back and apply the same mixture on it. When the fabric is wet, I start creating the pattern. I start from the middle of the canvas and pull the fabric up in few different places. You can go for just few convexity here and there, or you can create as many of them as you like. Once the fabric dried out a little bit, I've made new mixture. I again mixed filler with PVA glue, but this time I added much less water than before. With smaller brush, I applied again all over the fabric. At first, it's quite tricky to do it as the fabric is still quite soft. Make sure your brush is soft and with the gentle moves go along all the convexity. You can also add color paint to the mixture if you want to achieve different color than white. After drying for a few hours, the fabric becomes harder, but it's not super hard and I can still see the original picture through the fabric. Again, I make my mixture a bit thicker and apply another coat. This time the process is much easier as the fabric is harder. I try to cover the fabric only to the edges of the canvas. I let it dry and then work on the rest. Now everything is dry and hard. As in few places I went over the edge with my filler, I have to make it wet again. Otherwise, if I start wrapping it around the canvas, it might crack. I take damp sponge and go along the sticking out parts. I turn the canvas upside down, pull the fabric in and staple it to the frame. If you don't have a staple gun, you can use some glue or small nails. Thank you. 
I do one edge at a time and once this is all attached I cut the excess fabric off. I take my thicker mixture and with paddle knife I apply it on the edge of the canvas. I only going to do one layer so I make it slightly thicker. Then with the brush I smooth it out. I turn the canvas back up to be able to make the smooth connection between the front and the edges. I let it dry and my first texture canvas art is ready. This technique was quite easy and it's good for bigger canvas. Only the filler application was time consuming plus the waiting time between each coat. For my next technique, I will be using smaller canvas. And this time I'm using new one, but that's only because it's something good I already had around. This time to create the texture, I will be using a dry clay. For this size canvas, I take the whole piece of it and I start kneading it together. I take rolling pin and start rolling it out flat. As this piece of clay is quite big, you need to use some pressure to be able to roll it. I roll it out very, very thin. It's thin but still keeps its shape and doesn't tear. I remove it gently from the table and place it on the front of the canvas. And straight away I start creating the design. You have to be very gentle with it and also careful to not stick the pieces together as it might be really hard to separate it. I wrap it around the canvas edges and cut off the excess. Make sure it sticks to the edges very well. Using the damp sponge I smooth out all the edges and the whole clay surface. The harder part of the sponge is good for getting rid of any imperfection and the other side is better for smoothing everything out. Once I'm happy with the look, I leave it to dry. As it's quite a big piece, I leave it for 48 hours. Again, if you want, you can paint it in different color or even apply Mod Podge for glossy finish. Let me know in the comment section which technique you think you would prefer to try. I think when it comes to the effort, the filler one is more time consuming. The waiting time may be similar, but with the clay, once you do it, you just wait for it to dry. But with the filler one, you have to repeat the process of applying the, the filler on it. Price-wise, I think they're very similar. Obviously, it will depend on how big a project you work in, but price of the air clay and price of the filler is quite similar. And especially if you're working on pre-owned uh, canvas or the fabric, the price go much lower. I would recommend using air dry clay on smaller projects and fabric on a bigger scale canvas. Of course, you can use air dry clay on bigger canvas, but you might have to work in the sections as you won't be able to roll out so big piece of clay and actually move it onto the canvas. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumb up and subscribe to my channel for more ideas. And for now, thank you so much for watching, your support, and I will see you in my next video.